her head up on a on a table with one hand, looking pretty bored. Azim shifts from one hand to the other, looking pretty bored, and sees you guys approach. Hey there. Oh, hello. Didn't expect to see you so soon. We didn't expect to be back so soon either. Marcus, is that you? She kind of kind of puts it in a hushed tone because she doesn't want to attract too much He's attention. He's in bad shape. He needs help. Yeah. Trombley. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm stepping out of the bar real quick. You see this blonde human kind of walk back from the wine casks. Fine looking lad. Green eyes. And Trombley kind of nods. Doesn't say anything though. Kind of weird. But, you know, whatever. And, uh, he takes over her barkeeping duties and she ushers you into a back door around the bar. You have to go over the little flap that uh, separates the bar from the rest of the patronage and navigates you around a corridor made out of bookshelves. Holy crap, how many books has this woman written? Some of them aren't hers, though. She opens the, the door, and there's a modest bedroom. Lean, and she like gently leans him down and puts him on the bed and puts him into like a... Uh, you know, a uh, position where he's uh, laying sideways in the bed. What happened? Uh, we're not entirely sure. There were strange hypnotic vines. Uh, he was v- victim to their scents, pheromones. I'm not sure. And then he was locked away in some chamber that was being guarded by plant monsters. She kind of pauses at all this information and... All right, uh, let's see what I can do. And she kind of, like, rubs her hands together, puts them on his on his side, and there's a small divine glow that kind of emanates from her hands. And he coughs a little bit less, and then he's kind of still for a moment. It looks like he's unconscious now. That's going to take some time to heal, I, I assume. You mentioned something about vines? He claimed that they were telling him how to get to the surface. She Each once again pauses. Each dais in the middle with a switch. What? What? Switch? Vines? It didn't make much sense to us either. It felt like a built structure. There were three assorted rooms, each with a metal grate flooring, below which seemed to leap nowhere or to fluid. It was gross. Oh. Oh boy. Yes, they had some runic imagery suggesting that the buttons be pressed. Okay. And she pulls out her notebook and starts writing. And she flips back and forward between the leaf pages. Now these switches, you said, do they have anything on them? Were they inscribed? Yes. And there was fluid underneath one of them that appeared to be colored water possibly alchemically manipulated. She kind of breathe, exhales pretty loudly. So... Or at least it was some sort of strange growth that looked like. It was coiled like barbed wire. Mixture mm-hmm. of moss and lichen. Oh. He says he can't even remember how he got there. Why would your friends have been in a place like that? They follow the lichen trail. She's kind of rubbing her hand on her arm. And she's kind of like scribbling in her in her notebook. There's a little like nightstand next to the bed that she's like putting the notebook on, and she's kind of scri- scribbling it and kind of like scratching her shoulder as she's kind of trying to put two and two together. Well, you find Oralis and, and Epitetus as soon as we can. We intend to go out and look for them, but he was in such bad shape that it felt wrong to try and force the issue. No, no, no. You you did the right thing. Um oh, all right. There's some there's some rooms, accommodations overhead. Uh I'll let Trombley know. Just tell him I said you have a room for the night. You didn't breathe any of the spores. We had our masks you? on the whole time. Good. Good, good, good. Okay. All right. Just tell Trombley I said you get the first bed. He'll he'll take care of the rest. Is there anything else we can do? Uh, I need to I need to do what I can for him right now. And she turns to Marcus. Uh 
I'm working against stuff I don't really understand right now. I'm trying to do my best to put it together, but it's going to take me some time. These switches and these inscriptions, I I remember hearing something about him a a little bit ago. Um, Some more courageous people, like yourselves, uh, ventured out and they reported it, but they didn't do anything. They didn't touch anything. They just kind of came back and said that they found it, you know, and didn't at the time, I didn't really think of anything about it because, you know... Oh, it must have been drunk. That's the only way I'd have to go back to that again. I don't remember how many cups of wine when they were talking about it, but you guys should turn in. Probably been a long day very, for you. Very, long day. She looks at you, Carrick. Are, are you, are you I'm okay? I'm fine. I'm just severely depleted in my magical reserves. Yeah. Not much I can do about that, but give you time. All right. I'm, I'm sorry, but I, I have to I have to be That's alone That's fine. All right. Thank you. And she kind of waves you off. I go to Trombley and let him know what Azim said about rooms. When you say that Azim wants you to have the first room for tonight, he kind of pauses and you see his eyebrows kind of like stretch out a little bit. And he kind of puts his hand to his chin, rubs his non-existent beard for a little bit, and then nods, grabs a key from, from a key ring around his neck. And he hands you one. It's a bronze we go key. Out, we go upstairs to the first room. Okay, cool. You open the room. It's a nice bedroom, um, all things considered. You know these buildings that you guys were, um, you guys are currently in. They're actually been stone shaped from the ground. So yeah, you find these accommodations are actually kind of mm. nice considering the material. The bed looks soft. Uh, it's a pretty big bed. It's like a king size bed. And there's a decent amount of floor space, like enough for a hotel room. Yep. Two of you guys are going to have to double up on this bed, though. You guys got to uh, take a long rest? If that's an option, I would greatly appreciate it. Cool. I don't think we have a choice because we're out of spells completely. Like, I hate to do it, but... The heroes go to bed. You hear, like, chittering alongside the walls, and you see a faint figure scurry along the ceiling and... Then there's an ex- there's a close up on the thing's white milky eyes and end scene. Thank you all for listening, and special thanks to Toys and Things in Danvers, Massachusetts. Credit and thanks to our logo designer, Sierra Twasm. And also, if you guys enjoy what you hear here, please give us a follow on Twitter at Lords Broken. Thank you.